The world is watching. That is the chant on the streets of Hong Kong as images of mega protests are beamed around the globe. Two million people in a city state of just seven million out to stop the passage of a law that would allow suspected criminals to be extradited to mainland China. Last Saturday, Hong Kong's lead politician, the Beijing-backed Carrie Lam, announced that she was suspending the implementation of the legislation. But that was not nearly enough, either for the demonstrators or the local reporters covering this story. Because Hong Kong journalists know that should this bill pass, Beijing could extradite them one day, as well as their sources. Communist Party leaders on the mainland are watching the situation closely, too. Their public are far less informed. State-run television has either ignored the protests or echoed the party line that there is some Western conspiracy at play here. Our starting point this week is the semi-autonomous, for now, Special Administrative Region of China, Hong Kong. At first, the Hong Kong authorities played the waiting game, hoping that with time, the surge onto the streets of the city-state would subside, that the opposition to the proposed extradition treaty with China would fade, that the story would go away. Then Hong Kong's chief executive realized that wasn't happening. Prior to deciding to suspend the passage of the new law, Carrie Lam went before the cameras. She chose to do so on TVB, a government-friendly channel. But if she thought she was heading into a softball interview, she was mistaken. TVB did not broadcast the question she is about to answer. But one can easily surmise it had something to do with selling her people out. She decided to pick one television station to give her interview to rather than to give a general press conference at that stage. And she picked Hong Kong's only remaining main free terrestrial uh, TV station, known to be pro-government, known to exercise self-censorship. What stands out is actually how tone-deaf uh, her replies are. It is quite uh, ridiculous for a uh, chief executive officer to be referring you know, to herself as a mother of spoiled children. She just cannot give us whatever we want. And you know, that is very Chinese of her, you know, if, if I might say. You must listen to me because I'm a parent. But of course that is not an appropriate uh, stance for a, someone who is governing our city and actually she's paid by our taxes. The protests are occurring in a place that is in a pre-planned state of political limbo lasting half a century. When Britain handed Hong Kong back to China in 1997, the one country, two systems framework that came into force promised citizens a, quote, high degree of autonomy for 50 years, which explains the lack of an extradition treaty with mainland China. But there have been plenty of signs that Beijing is already influencing politics and the state of the media in Hong Kong. The South China Morning Post, long considered the newspaper of record, was bought by the Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba in 2015 and has since seen a mass exodus of staff complaining about soft coverage of China. That same year, another paper, Ming Pao, was criticized for killing an investigative story on the Tiananmen Square massacre and replacing it with a piece on Alibaba as a role model for young entrepreneurs. And on the current protest story, Ming Pao journalists posted an open letter, critical of the paper's biased reporting, in favor of the authorities and police, and taking issue with editorials that called the protesters rioters. It's not just about the bill, but about the, uh, the China's attitude towards uh, press freedom, 
and its understanding of uh, judicial independence. Several journalists and editors from Hong Kong, they have been uh, harassed or even sentenced to jail by mainland authorities with charges that have nothing to do with the report. Hong Kong being a key information hub for journalists, not just in Hong Kong, but around the world to report on China. So that extradition bill will expose each and every of them to risk. We've seen creeping self-censorship. We've seen um, businesses withdrawing their advertising um, under pressure from needing to do business with China. So all those things are, are very real threats. But at the same time, compared to the press in mainland China, the Hong Kong media is far more vibrant, is out there exposing scandals, and people are very proud of that. And the fact that their media can report on these demonstrations is very important to the people of Hong Kong. Hong Kong's um, situation has been taken up uh, by the international media almost uniformly. At stake, say the demonstrators, is nothing less than Hong Kong's status as an island of rights and freedoms in a one-party state. And over the years, Beijing has been gradually exerting more and more influence over Hong Kong. And for those who marched, enough is enough saying that Hong Kong is, you know, being threatened. They, they say, you know, this is a David and Goliath story. You commonly hear that, well, China's, the mainland's uh, justice system is opaque, is not fair, they're brutal, they use torture, all of these things. But I don't know that you can delegitimize an entire country because of a few examples. The examples go well beyond a few. Beijing has little tolerance for dissent either in the mainstream news media or on social media, where the major Chinese platforms, Sina Weibo and WeChat, both censored the protest story. Social media in Hong Kong was also affected. The founder of Telegram, an encrypted messaging service popular with protest organizers, said the platform came under cyber attack from the mainland. Initially, state-controlled media outlets in China turned a blind eye to the story in Hong Kong. But as the protests continued and grew, that policy changed. They had to give it some coverage, and given the growing trade war between the Trump White House and President Xi Jinping's government in Beijing, the notion of foreign interests inciting the unrest got a lot of play. Well, for sure, you know, some people, they have really been completely brainwashed into thinking that all these protests are initiated by foreign influences. But that's just ridiculous, like two million people on the street, you know. Of course that is not true, and, but that's what they are trying to tell uh, the, the public in China. The Chinese media is not going to win a shouting match in the international community. Anything that is said, it'll be, say, oh, well, it's all the media is state-run, state-owned, state-influenced. Whatever they say is propaganda. So they're in a very difficult position when it comes to these types of things. Now, on the other hand, Donald Trump has drawn the biggest target on China. The Western press uh, has a duty to try to figure out what's going on. What are the forces that are playing out here, not just within uh, Beijing, but also within Hong Kong. The numbers on the streets of Hong Kong are considerably higher than the last time mass demonstrations occurred in 2014 over proposed electoral reforms, because the stakes have grown larger with the passage of time. The city-state is now five years closer to losing what autonomy it still has, the remnants of a democracy, the semblance of a free media, five years closer to 2047 and direct rule by Beijing. If Hong Kong was in control of its own future, those two million people on the streets would amount to real political power, a force to be reckoned with. But it's not. And there is a country of 1.4 billion next door with a government in Beijing that, like the media it controls, is treating this as a non-story.